Let us now talk about nuclear chemistry. Before we dig into nuclear chemistry, let us quickly remind ourselves of some things. In an atom, we have the nucleus, and inside the nucleus, we have the protons. Protons are positively charged, and we have neutrons that have no charge. Outside of the nucleus, we have the electrons. Now, let us take a look at three isotopes of carbon. Carbon 11, carbon 12, and carbon 14. Each of these isotopes would have six protons. So six protons, six protons for carbon 12, and six protons from carbon 14. They are all neutral, so each of them will have six electrons. While carbon 11 will have five neutrons, carbon 12 will have six neutrons, and carbon 14 will have eight neutrons. This is the first question. What is the role of neutrons in the nucleus of an atom? They only serve one function, and that function is to ensure that the protons are kept away from one another. So, in between the protons, we have the neutrons to prevent the two positively charged protons from coming into too close proximity. Which means that for the nucleus of an atom to be stable, you need to have optimum number of neutrons because they are the key to the stability of the nucleus of an atom. Let us now take a look at the three isotopes up here. And let us look at which of them will have optimal stability. In carbon 11, we have six protons and we only have five neutrons. Can five neutrons effectively keep apart six protons? The answer is no. And because of that, carbon 11 will be an unstable atom. In carbon 12, we have six protons and six neutrons. Can six neutrons effectively keep apart six protons? The answer is yes. So carbon 12 is expected to be very stable and it is the most stable isotope of carbon in nature. For carbon 14, we have six protons and we have eight neutrons. Can eight neutrons keep six protons apart effectively? Yeah. However, there is a saying that goes too much of a good thing is bad. If you drink too much water, it may kill you. In the case of carbon-14, we have too many neutrons compared to the protons. And because of that, 
carbon 14 will also be unstable so the bottom line is this an atom cannot have too many neutrons neither can it have too few neutrons it needs to have optimal number of neutrons in the nucleus for the atom to be stable now let us focus on the unstable atoms they will disintegrate they will break apart because when two positively charged protons get too close the energy of the nucleus will be too high so the nucleus would have to disintegrate so the unstable atoms are called radioisotopes they are unstable and they will break apart by releasing radiation the question then is what type of radiation do they emit when they disintegrate we are going to begin with alpha particles they are represented as the helium nucleus what that means is that this is the symbol for alpha particles Please remember that symbol. Since they only represent the nucleus of helium, there are no electrons. Alpha particles are positively charged. And if you look at the symbol of helium, you will see the mass number is 4, which means that alpha particles are very heavy. And because they are very heavy, they cannot move very fast. So they are massive. And as such cannot move very fast and because they cannot move very fast they cannot penetrate our bodies easily so they have low penetration power They can easily be stopped by a thin piece of paper. However, if they collide with our skins, they can knock off electrons from our outer skin layer, leading eventually to skin cancer. That is called ionization power they have high ionization power they can also be represented as alpha the alpha symbol 2 4 let us now learn about the next type of radiation that can be released in nuclear reactions 
beta particles are released when an atom undergoes disintegration because it is unstable. And what are beta particles? They are simply streams of electrons. And this is the symbol that is used to represent them. So they are negatively charged because they are electrons. And just like electrons, they have approximately zero mass number. So they are negatively charged. They move a lot faster than alpha particles because they are not as massive. They are about seven to 8,000 times lighter than alpha particles. So they are higher penetration power than alpha particles. If we are exposed to them, they can penetrate our skins. However, they can be stopped by a thick layer of clothing. But they cannot easily knock off electrons from our skins like the alpha particles. So they have lower ionization power. They can also be represented like this. Beta with a charge of negative one and an approximate zero mass number. Let us take a look at gamma radiations. Gamma radiations are electromagnetic radiations. That is another way of saying that they are a form of light. They have no mass and they have no charge. They can be represented as this, which means zero charge, zero mass. Because they have no mass, they can travel very quickly. So they have the highest penetration power of all the radiations. And they can destroy a lot of things because of that. But because they move too fast, they cannot really knock off any electron from anything. They rather prefer to penetrate. So they have lowest ionization power. We can only protect ourselves from gamma radiations by a very thick lead block. Let us now take a look at positron. Positrons are the opposite of electrons, which means they are the opposite of beta particles. 
And you can see that very clearly in the symbol for positrons. It is designated as this, which means it has a charge of plus one and a mass number of approximately zero, which is directly the opposite of electrons. Electrons have a charge of minus one. You must have heard of positrons before, but you probably never really paid attention to it. If you've heard of PET scan, you have heard of an application of positron particles. PET scan means positron emission tomography. Let us take a look at some questions. Give the mass number and charge of each type of radiation. Alpha particle, we know the symbol. The symbol is that of the helium nuclide, which means that it has a charge of plus two and a mass number of four. Positron, we just learned about that. The symbol is that mass number of zero, charge of plus one. Beta particles, beta particles are electrons. A charge of minus one, a mass number of approximately zero. Gamma rays, charge of zero, mass number of zero. Neutrons, now let us introduce neutrons. This is the symbol for neutrons. Charge of zero, mass number of one. Proton, that is the symbol for proton. Charge of plus one, mass number of zero. When a radioactive isotope decays, what actually happens? Well, it releases radioactive radiations. And that process can be easily captured by writing what is called a nuclear equation. And the nuclear equation is very straightforward. You begin with a radioactive nucleus, an unstable nucleus. The unstable nucleus decays or disintegrates to form a new nucleus that is more stable the radioactive nucleus is called the parent nuclide it gives birth to a daughter nuclide that is more stable and that disintegration is accompanied by the emission of some kind of radiation. Let us take a look at an example. The idea behind balancing a nuclear equation is very straightforward. All you want to be sure of is that the total mass number on both sides of the equation should be equal. Also, the total atomic numbers on both sides of the equation must be equal. This is a balanced nuclear equation. Let us quickly analyze it. On the left side of the equation, we have 98 as the atomic number. 
On the right side of the equation, we have 96 plus 2, which is equal to 98. So, the atomic number on both sides is balanced. For the mass number, we have 251 as the mass number on the left side of the equation. And on the right side, we have 247 plus 4, which is 251. So this is a balanced nuclear equation. Let us now solve some problems on that. Write the balanced nuclear equation for the alpha decay. This question is already telling us how we are going to write the equation. Alpha decay of americium-241 that is used in smoke detectors. You need a copy of the periodic table to know about americium. Bring up the periodic table and look for americium. Americium is right here. It is element number 95. So if we want to write the balanced nuclear equation, we will need to write americium as a symbol. The atomic number is 95. And according to this question, americium has a mass number of 241. The question says it undergoes alpha decay, which means it disintegrates by releasing alpha particles. That's the radiation. So what will be the identity of the daughter nuclide? To know that, we know that the total atomic number on both sides of the equation must be equal. So if we have two from the alpha radiation, then we should have 93 as the atomic number of the daughter nuclide. And then we go back to the periodic table and we look at the identity of element number 93, which is Neptunium. So, NP. And we also know that the total mass number must be balanced on both sides. So, if the alpha particle already has 4 and we want to get 241, we will need to subtract 4 from 241 to get 237. And that is the balanced nuclear equation for alpha emission. Let us take a look at one more question. Write the balanced nuclear equation for the beta decay of yttrium 90 used in cancer treatment and as a colloidal injection into large joints to relieve the pain caused by arthritis. Well, let us try to take it apart. This is the parent nuclide, yttrium, with a mass number of 90. We need the periodic table to know the atomic number of yttrium. Yttrium is element number 39. So, this is 39. According to the question, yttrium undergoes beta decay. So, it breaks apart to give a beta particle and to produce a daughter nuclide. What will be the identity of the daughter nuclide? Well, we know that we have 39 
as the atomic number on the left side of the equation which means we also must get 39 on the right side so the atomic number of the daughter nuclide would be 40 because minus 1 plus 40 is equal to 39 and the next question is what is then the symbol for element number 40 you need to pick up your periodic table and the symbol is zirconium which is ZR and what will be the mass number of the zirconium the total mass number for both sides must also be equal so this has to be 90 because 0 plus 90 will give us the 90 on the left side of the equation.